What's going on, psychos? It is I, some Joe Schmo here with another Psych Reaction Season 6, Episode 7, in for a penny. Uh, yes, to address the elephant in the room, I am in a different location. I, not to bore you with semantics, I am currently house-sitting for a friend over here in San Diego. So, uh, by the time these release, I'll probably be back at my own place recording in my own room. But, uh, for the time being, a few of these episodes may be in the confines of this limited scope here. I know you guys are so used to seeing all my knickknacks in the back. You got the, 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 the what's it called? The psych box set that's not there anymore. You don't have the cool, crazy lights. All you have is just me uncovered, emotional, vulnerable, and unplugged with y'all. <laughs> really, what can I say about this season so far? So far, it has been very enjoyable. Uh, a lot of these bangers, man, uh, it's really difficult. Uh, I feel like the first like four or five episodes have really set a good precedence for like the quality I've come to expect out of season six. And again, like I said, I think it was in what season four or uh, episode four, what I was talking about, but it's like, I, I, I'm trying to still have a limited or a more tempered uh, expectations going into each episode because again, of how great the first like five or six have been, um, you know, Sometimes it's too good to be true, you know? You know what I mean? Uh, anyway, y'all, for those of you who are new to this channel, welcome. I do Psych Reactions here every single Wednesday and Saturday. So if you guys are enjoying this content, feel free to like, subscribe, do all the nonsense. And uh, I apologize ahead of time because if you hear any barking or any sort of uh, uh, snores and whatnot, I am in a room filled with dogs right now because uh, that's what I'm doing. House sitting, dog sitting, the whole nine yards. Anyway, y'all, let's jump into this episode now. <laughs> Juliet? Oh, hell no. Clowns, man. What is this, Terrorizer? <laughs> and also, too, a flashback on Juliet. I didn't really... I, I didn't, I didn't realize coming, that. It's coming, sweetie. It's coming. I know it. What, did he step out for cigarettes? Your clown's leaving soon. He can't even juggle. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of clown is this, man? Can't even juggle. Daddy! Hi, cutie. Oh. Tell your folks to vote for Hank Popper. He's good. <laughs> Yo, that's what we do with any real estate guy that shows up at the door. Like, bro, I don't know you. Like, I don't need your pen and pad. Like, <laughs> I guess it's useful paper. This group of thieves hit West Medical Supply early this morning, made off with a couple dozen oxygen tanks. Because of the great oxygen drought. Hold your breath, people. Yeah. Do your part. Like going through a tunnel. <sighs> My gut tells me we'll be hearing more from these guys. Okay. Keep me in the loop. Your gut. My psychic abilities, Lassiter. It's... <laughs> What he said. <laughs> Jules, I feel like ever since we went out, you've just been making fun of us. Rightfully so. Three things. Gary Busey. Gary Busey. And your 30th birthday bush. Ooh. An inflatable bounce house. A slip and slide. And I was about to add two ginormous ponies. You mean horses. Look, you already got a car. Who's it from? Oh, it's... Uh, <gasps> a ginormous... My dad. He's in LA. And pony. he wants to come up and see me for my birthday. Oh, damn. Oh, there you go. Yeah, coming back full circle. Talking about your birthday. Sean, I mean, we talked about this. this yeah, come to my think dad of it. Is off limits. All right. Uh, not talking about feelings about father. Check. Check mark off that uh, of what not to bring. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'll just say if you're giving me a strong indication that you don't want to talk about something, I'm probably going to drop it. Well, he's just not really presentable. Well, I mean, let's look at the. Uh, is he into crime? Because, like, with Juliet being a cop and then with her brother being like a spy and shit like that, it seems like maybe, is it like a, a abandonment issues maybe? When a woman complains about a personal issue, she doesn't want the man to just listen. She wants him to solve the problem. Oh, Lord have mercy. When they say one thing, what they want is for us to do the exact opposite. Ugh. I strongly disagree. <laughs> I don't like this at all where this is going. That's just like, oh man, that's a little testy. Looking suave as ever. Wait, is that? Hey, fellas. Tell me that's Great not. Day for the hot links, huh, fellas? <laughs> you don't look like Tita Nagasaki and Bob Jones. Yo, it's the Priceline negotiation guy. <laughs> I've saved a ton of money on all my uh, vacation needs because of this man, Shatner, the Shat. I'm dating your daughter, sir. Wow, that's one way of just coming out swinging, huh? Big Willie style. Welcome to Miami. Pleasure to meet you. Sean? Oh, okay. Likewise, sir. Why don't we play a few holes and then uh, have a few drinks? My man, yeah. Chateau, the Chateau de William? <laughs> Why do I feel like it's just like 
<laughs> Shatner was just like, yeah, I'll do, uh, I'll do this psych show, whatever, but we got to film it at my house. I'm not going anywhere else. <laughs> you, got, you come here. We're not going anywhere. This is very, very special stuff. <laughs> nice. <What a> place. <laughs> we know how Gus does with uh, hard alcohol, huh? Smooth. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's so funny to me, dude. I, uh, unless like it's like something that notoriously like goes down smooth for me, it's really hard to tell like the difference between like a really good tasting like malt whiskey or bourbon or whatever. Cause, cause sometimes, most of the time, it tastes like burning. You know what I mean? Um, but unless like, you know, there's been tequila that I've drank that like just goes down super smooth. Uh, and probably the cheaper stuff that goes down super hard. Either way, it's it's really hard to distinguish between them. Seriously, why haven't you seen your daughter in 15 years? Damn! Just coming out with the questions. Mr. O'Hara, I'm here to broker a reunion between father and daughter. But unless she responds, I think it's wise to stay away. Was he going to, like, kill us? Mob boss? Mob boss Shatner I here? can and will help orchestrate this reunion. Oh, boy. It's always, like... Always give it up to Sean's like ability to like want to fix things, man. He's always a fixer upper. Shit, she's gonna be pissed. She's gonna be pissed. Okay, I'll tell you. Your father's coming to your birthday. I arranged the whole thing. We, we arranged. Yeah, I'd get out of that situation, Gus. <laughs> I would not want to be a part of that. Yeah, but I, I, I thought you wanted me to do the exact opposite of that. Why would you think that? Because I know women. <laughs> he says unconfidently, like I, uh, I know them. He's got a giant. House and a yacht. He doesn't have any of those things. He's oh, not shit. rich and he's not powerful. Was he a schlub? He's a con man. Oh, and you just got played, sucker. How could you? Dude, I love how they put just like <laughs> William Shatner as a con man. Like the guy's got charisma spilling out the ass. It would be kind of difficult to not believe him. Also, incredibly dominant sometimes. The way he just like holds himself. I'm kind of low-key scared of William Shatner, guys. The correctional facility. What the shit is happening here? Is that the uh, guitar player from Limp Bizkit? Wait, what is happening? Wait, this all of a sudden took a turn. Uh, uh, <coughs> this man's just waiting Hello, here. Boys. Hello, puppet. Who are these goons? Where are we at now? My man with the dad shoes and everything. Yeah, look at him. You're a con man. I prefer confidence, man. You should be a <laughs> <laughs> I'm a confidence man. And this man now is going to go straight? Yeah, right. You're going to leave behind a, a bunch of crime, a life of crime, and mansions. The words that convinced me to earn a relationship with Julianne. Okay, I'm back in. I can help you. <laughs> yeah, Gus. <laughs> yeah, Gus knows way better. He's like, I heard Juliet. I don't want any part of that shit, dude. Come on. Foghorn needs leghorn. They're the same rooster, Sean. Yeah. Exactly. Foghorn Leghorn. I haven't heard that name in God knows how long. Now listen here. Now, now, now listen here, son. What is it? The Chicken Hawk? Man. Looney Tunes. Fucked my shit up. Just to clarify, my record is clean. I've been in the biz 30 years, and I've never been charged with it. Oh, how is she going to take this, dude? Oh. All right, everybody, listen up. Band of <laughs> Just leave them behind. Oh, shit. I didn't realize that because they introduced the whole, like, thieves aspect. Okay, that's what that scene was in the the, the manhole tunnel. Um, that now she's going to think because her father's back that he has anything to do with it. Ooh. As you can see, they used an extremely high-powered pure oxygen blowtorch. Unless he's going to help them. <gasps> Let's go, dude. That's Jimmy Fitz. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my God, Frank. Uh -oh. Ooh, you know a father-daughter relationship's on the, uh, is a, in a bad state when she's calling him by his... His first name. Surprise! Oh, no, no, I'm not Gus. I'm, I'm, I'm his cousin. His cousin. Okay. okay, I'll be with you shortly. Great, yeah. <laughs> awesome adjustment there, dude. Yeah. Jimmy Fitz is one of the most talented safe crackers in the business. There you go. You know so much about. This. I'll be having those words. Uh oh. He was a con man. What? What can I say? You know? Unless he's still. I mean, I guess he still is. But. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you here. Damn. And I have 30 Oof. years of reasons why. So Oof. I will do the respectful thing and leave it at that. It's always hard, though. You gotta realize he's your dad still, though, Jules. Oh, you're not in the doghouse. No, you're gonna have to work really hard to make it into the doghouse. Ooh, damn, son. Which is still in an enclosed area. <laughs> Jules, am I in the pound? <laughs> you ain't nothing but a hound dog, dude. Frank seems very sincere 
about wanting to rebuild his relationship with you. Oh, you know, you're right. I, I always go about these things the wrong way. I shouldn't have rushed in here. Look, can I just, can I just have a little time? Step one, apologize. Step two, I just want to be with you. He's got word that a place called General Industries was hit. Three masked men in and out took a bunch of construction equipment. Those guys are going to make their score in the next 24 hours, I guarantee Damn, you. here you go, man. You're going to need your dad to figure this out. I love that. Autotrader.com. Yeah. Me, they have a ton of new cars. <laughs> dude, that's brilliant, dude. Priceline Negotiator. So there's been complaints about construction noise downtown, right? There are dudes drilling in the middle of a parking lot. City never... Here we go. Yeah. That's like a Ghostbusters theme right there. Uh, I'm not officially on this case. Oh, are they going to hire him? Because technically, if he gets hired through them, he's a consult. Consultant. Why do I keep saying consult? Where the only people allowed here are the people working the case. Oh, I am working the case. Yep, we hired him, baby. What is he talking about? This is awkward. <laughs> Sean. Oh, shit. You must be out of your damn mind. He hired your dad. Oh. Yeah, it was a collaborative effort to bring this man on who can help us solve the case. He's the closest out of everybody. Man, my man just doesn't know when to quit, does he? He just keeps going for it. <laughs> You're in deep. You're an accomplice. In fact, if this were a crime, you'd be in cuffs right now. Oh, the f dude, this is like the first uh, best friend, uh, girlfriend fight. We've all been down that alley before, huh? Extremely frustrating to be constantly ignored. In fact, it's yeah. getting a little hurtful, Sean. Ooh. Okay, I only did this because your dad is Damn. so desperate to spend more time with you. This is going to be heartbreaking if it decides to go the path of, like, uh, uh, William Shatner's character was doing this the whole time because he's part of the score. Oh, that's going to break my heart. It's this situation. He knows the best thing to do is just lay low. Has anybody got a megaphone? I, I, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite the opposite of what you wanted there, huh? Crew we've been following, led by this guy on the right, Chad Emai, stole a top-of-the-line safe this evening. And we now know that the safe contained legal papers from a little... Was it, like, uh, information on, like, his past as well, too? Like, crime papers? <laughs> crime papers? You know what I mean? <laughs> Documentation on their crimes? Let's zero in on what the big plan is. we got to figure out what these guys are after next. Well, we forget about banks. It's federal. It means the FBI. No, we're looking at something privately owned. <laughs> <laughs> Million dollar coin. Oh my. I was gonna say that that road show or whatever. Antiques road show. The Santa Barbara Expo has a featured coin every year worth millions. Santa Barbara Coin Expo. The star attraction this year is a 1943 bronze penny valued at two million dollars. There's only a dozen of them in existence. <laughs> that was like the Whoa, what the hell did he just say? I'm proud of you. Oh man, can this Stop getting any more awkward right now. I was going to say, I love how we uh, reference because didn't he, wasn't he like into pennies? Um, what episode was it? The uh, the greatest adventure never told one. Uh, his dad, the great, exp or his uh, uh, uncle leaving behind pennies or whatever. Didn't he like kind of like, uh, or I know his shtick was leaving behind a penny, but wasn't there like one that like uh, Gus was like, oh, wow, that's a, that's, that's a great date. I knew the exact year of the coin. Spoken like a man with no girlfriends. <laughs> Damn. You mean to tell me someone might want to steal the fascinatingly rare 1943 bronze penny worth two million bucks from my coin expo? That's right. That is crazy. Butter my buns and call me a biscuit. I'm shocked. I'm gonna butter your biscuit. How is a penny worth that much money? Exactly ten cents. How much you give us for it? Two nickels or maybe ten pennies or just a different dime? <laughs> we'll take the two nickels. Okay. Are you <laughs> yeah. Two is greater than one. Real pro can get through this safe in two minutes. Your coins are sitting ducks in there. Please, have you not listened to anything I've said? He just has it in a safe right in his office. Dog. Yeah, they're probably working on the inside, yo. Come on. Oh, yeah, same team for years, huh? Yeah, we did have some electrical issues, so we hired someone to fix them. So you do have a new employee. Uh-oh. Later, bitch. Yeah, you bow tie goon. He knows nothing. Mm, yeah. He, he knows, knows something. something. <laughs> they're, like, forming a better relationship than Jules and... His own relationship. <laughs> Juliet O'Hara, we met earlier. How long have you been married? Uh, three years. Kids? Uh, a boy. I have a little girl. They're so much fun, aren't they? What? Jules has a kid. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> she has a little girl? Some guy approached me and offered a couple grand if I gave him info on the building where the expo is being held. That's my girl. 
<laughs> I want all resources at that expo immediately. All right. So we know something fouls at play then, at least. Way to go, Jules. I'm fine. I'm fine. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> Uh-oh. There, the guy with the black briefcase. Uh-oh. Suit and tie? Unless he's trying to stop him from doing it. Uh, like, he's trying to get it himself now. Oh, shit. He's going to alter plans. It's like an Ocean's Eleven situation. Black hat. West corner, backpack, black hat, go. Hey, Quinn. You sure? Are you, uh, are, you, are you sure that wasn't there? Yes, they're sure. Unless it's already gone. Not sure if you're aware, but coin enthusiasts are an easily scared group of mostly single men. <laughs> mostly single. <laughs> yeah. Like an alien, so they mostly come out at night. No, no. We'll be right there. Let's go. Prestige safe deposit was just robbed by a couple of masked men. <laughs> That's where you sent it. Boys, I use smoke screens and I use my smart. That's what. Ooh. Prestige safe deposit is where he keeps the real penny. Wow. Get played, son. It was that bow tie. You let it go to your head, man. I know. I know the powers of bow ties, man. Sometimes you think you look great in them, and you just scoff at everybody else. Must have been crazy to think that I, I could. I was guessing the whole time. I shouldn't have been there, Charles. Oh. I want to believe you, Mr. Shatner. These guys got in, unarmed, took the penny, and made a clean exit. It's pictures of you. Damn. So not only do we not have the penny, but we have no... Discernible. Oh, there you go. He's got a little tattoo on his neck. Oh, I shit. The guy that's... No. To leave a house like that Wait, is he working with him then? Or is that guy just a byproduct of just un unnatural forces? The entire police department went down to that coin expo while his crew stole the penny from where it was actually being kept. So Man, this uh, episode takes the whole pick a penny or find a penny, pick it up all day long. You have a good luck. So let Damn. me get this straight. Please tell me it's not. You roll into town under the guise of patching things up with your daughter. Breaking her heart. You're planning a con the whole time. No, I came to town with every intention of making things right with Juliet. Didn't catch the plan to take the penny until I got inside the police station and saw this other crew of thieves pulling scores in Santa Barbara. And Damn. I could take whatever I want. Oh, you harlot, dude. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you shot it. That's cold blooded, man. This whole, he's like addicted to the game. This was supposed to be a clean score. And my hope was that Juliet wouldn't know it was me. Mm. So what do you got? The police waiting for me? Uh... He's going to uh, He's gonna have to be locked up in order for her to, uh, like, forgive him, huh? I'm going to give you till tomorrow morning to make things right. Otherwise, I'm telling her everything, Frank. Yeah, give you a chance. Because, I do. I would not want to tell her. Like, if I found out your father was, ooh. But on the flip side, what if she finds out he knows? It's like, why didn't you tell me? Like, you can't wait either way, huh? We got our guy. Really? What? Uh, let me explain. We got an anonymous tip regarding the whereabouts of Chad Emai. He was sleeping in his hotel room, Penny, right on his nightstand. Oh, yeah. We got oh. him. That's my girl. Oh, no. Still too soon. Yo, but now Sean knows all this shit about him. Shit. And her guard's already lower. She's going to be like, yeah, me and my dad, we're getting along just fine now. No, Sean, the turntables have been turned. He planted the penny on Chad. This is a win-win situation. Cops get that <sighs> man. We know he's a bad guy. That penny goes back to that D-bag, Sheldon, and uh, Juliet is none the wiser. How could you? I also told you that I was sleeping like a baby. Someone removed part of my window. Is that the kid from Pet Cemetery? Holy shit, that totally is, isn't it? Came in my room like a ghost and uh, planted it on my nightstand. <laughs> you expect us to believe that. Looks like she is the wiser, Frank. Piecing it together, homegirl. Thank God. Oh, here it goes. It's going to get awkward now real quick. Where are you off to, Frank? Uh, nowhere. I just thought maybe you could handle things from here. After Mom kicked you out and changed all the locks on the doors, I always wondered how you would sneak into my room and leave little gifts on my nightstand. At sneaking in, yep. In and out. Wow. Ghost. Wow, that's how she made the comparison of, like, what that guy said of how he sneaked in. And I'm not going to sit around and waste my time and my tears on mistress idols and birthdays, but what really breaks my heart is that you won't be there for all the moments to come. So congratulations, Frank. Your longest con of all was on your own daughter. I'm telling you, the only way to get out of this or to ever earn her respect back is just turning yourself in at this point. And even still, she probably wouldn't forgive you. Poor Jules, man, getting, that's why she told you not to intervene, Sean. You're breaking her heart. You think matters worse, they had to let Chad go. His alibi checked out, and they only have circumstantial evidence against him. Oh, yeah. And they confirmed an eyewitness report of a middle-aged man rummaging around a bush outside... Hey, that's you, buddy. Yeah. Congrats. That means Chad is free to pull off his score 
while I'm uh -oh. pulling off my car. Anonymous tip regarding uh -oh. the whereabouts of Chad E. Mai. Wait a minute. Katie I just Perry. Had a vision of Chad attending three very random concerts this week at the Santa Barbara Bowl. Gus, oh. we just figured out what they're gonna rob. I just thought he really liked Katie. They're gonna rob Katie Perry? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, I know it's. But if I actually help you bring them down. Oh. Sorry, uh, Frank. Re yeah, redemption now, Frank. Get out of here, son. Get out of here. We did find a variety of concert ticket stubs in the evidence from Chad's hotel room. We should bring there you go. Put together a plan. Real. Don't do that. Oh, shit. Yeah. She's like, you still in the dog pound right now. The Santa Barbers, that looked like a Photoshop sign. <laughs> Which makes me the guy from Mad Men. Gus is Affleck and Jules is Mini Driver. What the just shit? Just up the town with Goodwill Hunting. Hey, you're wicked smart, Gusta. <laughs> well, wasn't Ben Affleck in both movies, though? The town, right? That was the one with uh, Jeremy Renner, right? Juliet, I, I swear on Gus's life, we had no idea he uh -oh. was coming here. You uh -oh. have to believe me. I know I shouldn't be here, but Sean said I should throw myself at your feet and beg for mercy. Yo, Frank, man, we got to get it together here. Can I say something? I would rather you didn't. It's just going to get awkward again. <laughs> Dude, I love Lasseter being like the secondary character in this whole running, um, or this whole episode, because it's all just with uh, Juliet's father and then the uh, Gus and um, Sean. I... I want to change, but obviously I have more soul searching to do, mm. despite my shortcomings. It's so hard, man. Family. It's so hard to say no to family, y'all. Being there for the important parts of your life. But you've already missed them. They're gone. Hey, th plenty more to come. Getting married, having kids, your first dog. You deserve first place in your fifth grade talent contest. The only reason that bratty little Wendy Pace won was because of- Oh shit, he went to all of her events. And that song you sang, the- Time after time was beautiful choice. Oh, 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 man. He was in the shadows the whole time, dude. Like the stealth ninja Clown he is. Chuckler. On your ninth birthday party? Uh, oh, there you go. I knew you had it in you, Mr. Shatner. I knew you had it in you. When they swore you in, gave you that badge, and I realized. Luckily. <laughs> Lazarus, like, mm. damn. That's so wholesome, man. Shit. Well, when your mother remarried. And I saw what a great stepdad Lloyd made for you and the boys. I, I thought maybe I'd just stay out of the way. That was probably the best thing you could have said to her. <laughs> like, given the situation and, like, your tumultuous, like, relationship. That's probably the best thing you could have said, uh, William Shatner. Come on, man. Like, just, like, admitting, like, I was there for everything. Unless he's probably just getting, like, cliff notes in, uh, or not cliff notes. Uh, unless he's, like, getting cliff notes from, like, his ex-wife to be like, this is what happened at her uh, uh, actual party. And then he just busted out for a rainy day. That's what I do. That's the long con right there. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, great people around. Very special people. I don't know about him. <laughs> <laughs> is that what, is, is, was that a real, was that a real thing? Was, is he really, I'm just like super jaded and I'm always just kind of like, I don't trust anybody. It's gotten me this far in life. Uh-oh, oh yeah, homeboy in red talking into your wrist. Yeah, that's natural. Red ball cap. Gray sweatshirt. Oh, Jesus. Yo, wicked stun. Wicked smart stun. It's dead station. If it's a dead station, why is there KSRF 103.1, the surf band mm -hmm. parked out there? That's them. I have an idea. Uh-oh. Let's go with the bait. Let's go with the good old bait. Pulling away. Let's go. I guess I'm still confused what they're trying to steal at the... Uh, at the bowl. Like, were they just trying to steal the, uh, oh shit, they're going straight to the. Oh, did they move up the car? So that it was like the old switcheroo then? They thought they put it in the right car? Dude, that was brilliant. Yeah, you came in clutch after all. Now turn yourself in, Dad. Now turn yourself in. Come on, Mr. Shatner. Okay, you can open. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, a mini jump house. <laughs> That's badass. Go have a blast. Look who's here. I don't Can't you still impl uh, implicate Thank him? Thank you for coming. Is that the word? Couldn't you still, like, arrest him technically for, like, stealing it? And then, like, I guess there was no, like, definitive proof that he placed it on them, huh? The penny, that is. Wait, where is the penny back in, uh, back in the vault then? Where's the penny, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The real penny. 
is being put into the evidence room right about now. Oh, hey, so he's, he's giving it back. Yeah, commendable still, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's only like a white lie that that he's not saying that it's not there, right? It's not like she's openly saying like, hey, do you have the pony, right? Or the the penny? Um, <laughs> I said... I was gonna say pony. Do you have the pony? Because all I heard is uh, ginormous ponies in this uh, one episode. I'm pretty sure, guys, that was the... That had to have been, what, the most famous, I think, cameo we've had up until this point, right? William freaking Shatner, dude. I couldn't think of any other character or uh, uh, actor that would make a cameo in this show that I'd be like, more famous than William Shatner, dude. More famous than that guy. Um, I love this. I love, like, when we do get these episodes that are... Uh, I feel like it's been a while since we've gotten, like, the... Uh, 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 the workings of like a Juliet story, right? Obviously, one of the last ones I remember is the um, the boyfriend central one, right? Or centric one. Uh, and it's kind of funny because we did just have like what two episodes back, one with Lasseter. So it's like it's always refreshing to get these like kind of like refreshing, uh, uh, refreshing kind of takes on um, like Juliet and uh, 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 Lasseter because again, all we do is just get the antics of Sean and Gus. That it is nice to kind of get that emotional hit from like um Juliet's dad like that whole like situation and it's like kind of cool to kind of see like how gut-wrenching that whole situation was though with like the way uh why she's like in um like went the police route uh it's always that influence of again like a parent that did something bad that you're like well now I have to make up for or I have to feel like I have to make up for um you as a lost cause of a father kind of thing but uh super heartwarming at the end though dude bringing it back i feel like it's, it's like such a trope though right in some of these like um heart of thief kind of uh gold smuggling kind of guy who's like a good guy but has like nefarious types of like character traits is that there's always that like uh i'm still a good guy i i, I saw <laughs> i went to your birthday party i never said hi and it's like well, why not you could have just like dicked in real fast or dipped in and Hey, what's going on? Cool clowns. Peace out. You know what I mean? Which I don't know what's more heartbreaking, just not going at all and then eventually telling him that you went or going for like a minute and then just peacing out. Does that have long, longer lasting like PTSD on kids? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I'm not in the health profession or the, you know, psych profession. I have no idea what we're talking about here, guys. But yeah, dude, it's good to see. I'm glad that Jules kind of semi called out Sean's shit though in there saying like, hey, well, you know, you're not listening to me and it's kind of hurting me. And it's like, dude. Yeah, again, you got to look at those, like, uh, uh, not red flags, but you got to look at those, like, red stop sign indicators when you're talking about something in a relationship like that where you're like, yo, maybe I shouldn't talk about her father. She's clearly not, like, <laughs> and I get maybe that's stuff that you maybe eventually want to decide and talk about, but, like, yo, it's still very fresh in your relationship. Like, let's not, like, let's not really bring up things that she's not comfortable talking about right now. I don't know, Sean, but it's just, like, I do like the fact that Jules um, kind of takes a stand with uh, 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 Sean, though, too. Like, she likes to kind of uh, voice her concerns, voice like where she's coming from in these situations. And it's like, for Sean, dude, like this is your dream girl, dude. You got to live up to the expectation on her end too. Like you got to be a, you got to be the, all the man that you can be in the Navy army. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, guys, very wholesome episode. Really love the, uh, uh, the cameo of Mr. Shatner himself. Y'all does it get any better? Only time will tell until next time. Y'all, this is just some Joe Schmo. And we'll see you next time. Peace out.